In this video, we're going to do an overview of the UI of Machine Builder, and we're going to talk about tips to customize the layouts. Let's start with the top left corner here. You have all your drop downs. I'll make a specific video about that. You have the file saving, opening a scene, edit, so undo, redo, copy paste, animation. You can change your settings here your preferences, you can edit your layout, uh, you can add more windows as well. So every tab that you see here in the interface you can make more of them if you want to put them on a second screen for instance. So this is the 3D viewport with the axis in the bottom left. Um, when you select an object, you see the name of that object here on the bottom right. And you have the coordinator of that object for uh, translation, or if you're in rotation, you see the rotation values, uh, depending if you're in a global, so that's a world space, or in local space. On the right, you have all the those tools, so local versus global, uh, movement, rotation, scale, and some other tools. And below your viewport you have the timeline. Uh, you can go to different takes with the drop down. You can drag your time slider around. You can middle mouse button to uh, jump the slider to a certain frame. You can extend like reduce your slider or extend the, the timeline. And you have some playback options here. One of the most important uh, tab is the navigator. It's similar to the outliner in Maya. So you'll see all your objects organized per object type. So everything you have in your scene. You can double click and see some properties here that are gonna show up. Those properties are also here in the properties view. Next to the navigator, you have the dop sheet. I personally never use it because the, the timeline is, is great and very easy to work with already. You have the F curves, of course. This is like the graph editor in Maya. Of course, you can press F to zoom in. You can change, select it and force the value, for example, if you want to zero out uh, some translation. So if you select mul multiple objects, uh, the cool thing is that you can still just click directly translation or just translation X and Y and it's going to select it for all your objects. So if you want to see all the X translation of all your objects, you don't have to select it manually for all the objects. You have the story tab, very important. So this is like the time editor in Maya, so you can create um, new tracks, add uh, the current animation that you have on the, on the viewport, add it into your your uh, track editor, right? Um, and then when you do edits on the story mode, you actually want to activate it here, or here it's the same button. Then you have your key controls where you can jump from uh, one key to the other. You can set a key, you can set the zero key, so it's uh, a key of value zero. So for example, on a layer, if you created an offset and later you want to go back to what's uh, in the underlying layer, in the base layer, you can add a zero key. Uh, you can uh, directly make the key flat or discontinuous, otherwise you can right click on your keys and change the interpolation type. Um, you can see uh, your keying types, so either full body, body parts, which are the icons that are here, full body, body parts, or selection. And when you're in selection, so it means you're keying for only the selected object or objects. Um, you can key in uh, T, R, S, so translation, rotation, scale, or uh, T, R, both translation and rotation at the same time, so most of the time you, you want to use that, or all three at the same time, TRS. 
or you can key just for the current camera if you're working on cameras or uh, selected property properties so back in the F curves if you select some properties you can key just for these properties you have the auto key icon here then underneath you have your animation layers you can add multiple layers merge them or delete them and you can also reorganize them with drag and drop uh, on the layers you can change the them to override mode if you want to work in override so that's like an interpolative um, setting not uh, additive press delete you can copy paste the layer with ctrl c ctrl v and you can mute them and uh, make them solo or lock them just the usual the resources tab is pretty important too uh, you'll find your post controls so this is like a studio library in a way so you can store as many poses as you want and this is like you just have to double click to uh, apply them on your character and if you have an object selected it's going to apply the pose relative to that object if it's part of your character we'll go in more details uh, on the post controls in a specific video the properties this is like your attribute editor if I compare with Maya uh, by default here you may have a default type and when you have default type uh, it only shows you the the essential uh, properties uh, but I recommend always making sure you have all type here so you have access to all the especially if you're um, setting up the character I recommend that you go in and select all type make sure this is always active so you have all the, the details uh, you have the viewer options for example to to show or hide an object to prevent it from uh, getting transformation so when you untick transformation the user can't move the object around or enable selection I uh, tend to uncheck that on models for example so you can't select the models and in the properties you can see that uh, some of them have a K and an A next to them uh, it's the same here on the animation picker you see K and A what is that um, K means that there's a key so right now for example the visibility of my object is not keyed at all it doesn't have any key on the entire timeline and the A actually means animatable uh, if the A is grayed out, it means that in your entire motion builder scene, so in all your takes, the, the this value is never animated. So let's say I'm, I go to schematic view and I select my mesh here. Um, I can see that my mesh is never animated anywhere. So if I turn off the visibility, it's actually applying on every take, right? Because it's a, just a constant value actually gonna lock this um, now if I start making it animatable it means I can uh, add keys to it here I'm gonna key it here and then a bit later I'm gonna uh, select the visibility turn it on and now it's actually telling me okay you change you modify that property you should key it but right now it's not keyed yet so if I move I lose my edit Right, so I want to key uh, or I want to change and key or if you're in auto key of course it's immediately gonna make a key which is a dark red okay so now I can see my property uh, I can see those two keys and my property changes uh, if I unselect the visibility I don't see my keys right I need to select that because by default you're only gonna see the keys for T and R which is what you see here in the key controls And uh, now that I animated that that, that uh, property, uh, if I turn off animatable, I'm gonna lose all my keys. So maybe sometimes you wanna you accidentally uh, animated something you didn't mean to, um, and so you want to get rid of all the keys. And everywhere we can do this. And now there's no key anymore. You'll see that some uh, properties aren't animatable, like visit visibility inheritance some stuff like uh, 
the degrees of freedom, which are the, the limits uh, or the pre-rotations, which are like the, the frozen transforms. Um, there's also uh, here in transformation pivots, you have geometry offset. That's just a constant uh, value. You won't be able to animate it. And uh, a property that's animatable means that you can key it, but that also means that you can uh, put it in a relation constraint, for instance. Uh, relation constraint is a very powerful uh, node base um, constraint system. So let's say here I drag and drop my uh, control. Let, let's stick with the mesh. Um, drag and drop my mesh here, receiver. You can see that in the relation constraint, I only see the properties that are animatable, so TRS by default, but I don't see the visibility. Now, if I make it animatable, I see it here, and I can actually, you know, uh, play around with it and make some logic. Can also create some custom properties here if you go in the editor. You have your filters. It's good to use it next to the F curves because uh, you want to select your curves and then you can actually uh, apply some layers like Butterworth or Smooth or Peak Removal to uh, clean up uh, mockup data. The Asset Browser uh, lets you add a favorite path if you want to have a quick access to some of your files. You can also uh, find certain type of assets that you can add to your scene by dragging and dropping, like constraints or certain elements like cubes, uh, nulls, which are locators, right? You have uh, markers as well, which are uh, basically what the control rig is made of. It's, it's a series of markers and markers, the cool thing is that you can change their aspect um, so that's what you would want to use for animation controls so that you can customize the their look a little bit. It's not as advanced as uh, curves in Maya that you can really uh, customize these stay like these are still simple shapes, but at least it's different than a null and a null will always look the same. You can just change the, the size here or make the, the look be none if you want to hide it. Uh, you also have the primitives, um, cylinders, plane. You can also add some device if you want to control things with a joystick or a mouse or sound. You have physical properties if you want to add ragdoll, rigid bodies. If you want to add textures or material. It's all here in the templates. And you also have um, scripts. You have uh, the tasks, which are here by default, and you have the action scripts. So if you copy paste uh, some scripts in your action script folder, they will show up here. You have the groups tab. Groups are like um, selection sets. To create a group, you can go in the navigator by click insert group. Or if you select objects, let's say I want to create a group with my entire uh, left arm can hold space and click an object to select that object plus all its children and now um, can create a group here let's say uh, left arm right so I can show it uh, or not um, and let's say I actually don't want the fingers anymore so I can unselect them and I can say update so now my group when I go in and I select it and just click it uh, it's only the R now without the finger. So I updated the content of the group. And in the navigator, you can also select those objects and move them to a different group. Either add them so they will be in two groups or move them so they will not be in the arm group anymore. So, uh, so for example, I usually have a, an export group which are all the, the bones that I need to bake and export. Um, I have another group with all the controls of my character or just the fingers or the models. This way I make sure my models have a peak and transform unchecked. And when you uncheck that 
in a group, it changes uh, that property here for the for all the objects in the group. And the last thing we want to cover is the character controls. In this case, I just have a basic uh, model, so just bones and, and a mesh. So there's no character yet, uh, but this is where you can start uh, defining your skeleton. When you already have a character with uh, an actual control rig, this is what the, the interface is going to look like. So this is like a, an animation picker. You can see here the name of your character. Uh, so if you have different characters in the scene, you'll see the, the different characters here in, in this first drop down. And then you see the source. So this is where you can uh, switch between the character being driven by the control rig or being driven by nothing, so just the regular bones, the FK bones.